From having both of your legs crushed to pieces, to being swallowed whole three times, we count down the seven deadliest hippo attacks on people in Africa. Number seven, Chang Ming Chuang. It was August 2018 when 66-year-old Taiwan tourist Chang Ming Chuang and his colleague Wu Pang T went on a trip to Africa. The two were staying at Sopa Hotel, a wildlife resort in Kenya, and after spotting a hippo in the area that morning, they decided to go down to Lake Navasha to take some photos. And as the hippo cooled itself in the lake, Chang and Wu stood on the bank snapping pictures of the magnificent creature before them. But as they slowly edged closer and closer to it, trying to get better photos, the hippo suddenly charged towards them. And before they could even react, it had Chang in its jaws. It knocked Wu to the ground and bit down hard on Chang, its long sharp teeth piercing through his chest. Onlookers rushed in and when the hippo retreated, they reefed Chang from the water. Bleeding profusely, he was rushed to hospital where doctors tried to treat him, but his injuries were too extensive and he sadly died shortly after arriving. After the incident, the Kenya Wildlife Service tracked the hippo down and sadly shot it, fearing that it would attack again. Number six, Jacob Kanjami. In November 2020, six-year-old Jacob was swimming with his older brother near their home in the Kavango River in the Kavango West region in Namibia, a river that many locals use to fetch water from and fish in. But as the brothers waded around in the water, suddenly a huge male hippo lunged at them out of nowhere. Unable to get away in time, it grabbed Jacob and bit down on his left leg, piercing through his tiny thigh. His brother watched helplessly as the giant animal attacked his little brother with its monstrous jaws. And when it finally let go, locals rushed in to help the boys. Jacob was rushed to hospital where he underwent extensive surgery to treat his deep wounds. And although he was deeply traumatized, he has since recovered and returned home to his family. And since the hippo that nearly took Jacob's life continued to terrorize locals when they were trying to fetch water from the river, the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism put it down. Number five, George Waura and his friend Babu. In May 2021, local Kenyan fisherman George and his best friend Babu headed down to Lake Navasha in central Kenya to cast a fishing net. They knew the area well and were aware of the local hippo population, but with few other sources of income since the COVID-19 pandemic caused the global economic crisis to strike the region, many locals turned to fishing to support themselves. And despite the dangers, they had to risk encounters with hippos in order to feed their families. Babu had been attacked four times by hippos in the past, but had always managed to escape. Unable to afford a boat, the pair had always waded into the water up to their chests to set their nets overnight. And on this occasion, as usual, after setting their net the day before, they went back to check it the next day. And when they arrived, they noticed the eyes and ears of a hippo poking above the surface of the water nearby. To deter it, they beat the water with a stick, and the hippo docilely moved on. But as they waded into the water and checked to see what fish they had caught during the night, they didn't notice that the hippo had returned. Out of nowhere, it lunged at George, but it quickly dodged it and swam away. It then turned on Babu, who, not knowing how to swim, had no way to escape. The hippo grabbed him, clamping down on his body with its enormous jaws. Its lower two teeth pierced through his back once, twice, and finally a third time. The other fishermen in the area raced to the water's edge, but there was nothing they could do to stop the powerful animal. Distraught, they had to wait until the attack was over before they could wade into the water to help Babu. But it was too late. He was already dead. A funeral was held for him shortly after, and after mourning the death of his best friend, George returned to the lake to fish a few days later. Number 4. Matthew Wanjiku It was December 2019 when 30-year-old Matthew waded into Lake Devasha with three other fishermen to catch fish in order to feed their families. But as they waded through the water, a lone hippo suddenly charged at them. Stunned, the group ran for their lives. The others made it to safety, but Matthew, the slowest in the group, was seized by the giant beast. He screamed out in terror as it took him in its jaws and bit down on him. 
Seeing the commotion, onlookers screamed out from the shore, banging on metal to try and scare the hippo away, but it kept violently mauling Matthew, stamping on him repeatedly and swinging its head angrily. Matthew tried to escape, using a fallen tree to try to protect himself, but the hippo continued to bite him over and over, crunching down on his arm, shoulder and torso. But the onlookers didn't stop trying to scare it away, and after it had attacked him for ten whole minutes, they succeeded, and the hippo began to retreat, leaving Matthew lying in the water. Rapidly losing blood and fearing another attack, he made a dash for the shore, and when he got there he lay on the ground covered in blood and with his clothes torn to pieces, but he was still alive. He was rushed to hospital where he underwent surgery for his extensive injuries. He was later discharged and has since made a full recovery and is just happy to be alive. Number 3. Enoch Romano It was January 2018 when 26 year old father of two, Enoch, went fishing with his friend in the shallows of Lake Navasha in the Assarian area in Kenya. They relied on fishing in the lake to survive and knew there were hippos in the area. And as they stood on the beach reeling in fish, they were keeping a close eye on the hippos around them. After getting enough fish, they decided to call it a day. But as they began to make their way out of the water, without warning, one of the hippos suddenly turned on them. First it went for Enoch's friend, crunching down on his leg with its humongous jaw, skewering through his thigh with its teeth. Terrified, Enoch tried to get away, but before he could, the hippo turned on him. It knocked him over and began stomping repeatedly on his legs over and over, crushing them into a million pieces. Horrified onlookers watched helplessly, trying to deter the animal, and when it finally moved on they rushed in. With his legs hanging from the skin and both Enoch and his friend writhing in pain, they were rushed to hospital. Enoch's friend underwent extensive surgery and was discharged soon after, but Enoch was taken straight to theatre, where doctors were left no other choice than to amputate his legs, since the hippo had absolutely destroyed them. But he eventually recovered and was discharged from hospital. The horrific ordeal will haunt Enoch for the rest of his life, and he was sadly abandoned by his wife after the attack, and now has to rely on friends to survive. Number 2. Marius Ells 40-year-old South African farmer Marius had raised Humphrey the hippo since he was just a baby. Humphrey had been rescued from a flood near Marius' farm and when, at five months of age, he had grown too big for the family looking after him, Marius had stepped in to give him a home. Marius had built a large enclosure and put a lake in it so that Humphrey could live in his natural habitat. And for six years, Humphrey had been a much-loved member of the family. Marius believed that Humphrey was like a son to him. They enjoyed swimming together and Marius had even ridden him like a horse. But over time, something in Humphrey changed. He had become aggressive. He had previously brutally mauled six of Marius' cattle, chased a man and his grandson who had been canoeing through Marius' farm and, most shockingly, had mauled Marius' own nephew, leaving him with permanent leg injuries. And despite being warned by experts and begged by his wife and family to get rid of Humphrey, Marius wouldn't listen. He believed he could trust Humphrey with his heart and that he wouldn't harm him. But in November 2011, on a day like any other, Marius went out to Humphrey's enclosure with his workers to feed his beloved pet. He walked to the edge of Humphrey's lake with an apple, and as Humphrey started making his way over, something was different about him. Sensing this, his workers screamed out to Marius, but it was too late. In an instant, Humphrey grabbed him, ripped him into the water and violently attacked him. He bit Marius with his massive jaws again and again, ripping him apart. Terrified, his workers began throwing rocks to deter him, but they were helpless against the beast and had to wait until the attack was over before they could rush in to save him. And when Humphrey finally did let go, they hauled Marius' mutilated body back to the bank of the water and called emergency services. But when they arrived, they declared Marius dead at the scene. And sadly, Humphrey was put down shortly after. Number 1. Paul Templer it was March 1996 when Paul was working as a canoe safari guide in Zimbabwe. He was an experienced guide and had been working on the Zambezi River for six years, taking tourists down the river to see the local wildlife. But on this particular day, one of Paul's fellow guides had come down with malaria, and so Paul had to step in to take over his canoe safari. 
and as he led a convoy of seven canoes down the picturesque river, three filled with tourists and the other four filled with Paul and three other young apprentice guides named Evans, Ben and Mike, they eventually came across a pod of about 12 hippos frolicking in the shallows of the river. They stopped next to them for a moment and observed them, but knowing the dangers, Paul began to lead the group away from them. But as the convoy began to move away, there was a sudden deafening bang and Evan's canoe was knocked off course and into deeper water. As Paul turned around, he saw a giant bull hippo throw Evan's canoe about one metre above the water, catapulting the young guide into the river. Paul paddled furiously towards him while screaming out to the tourists to paddle back to safety. And as he reached Evans, he leaned out to grab the panicked young guide's outstretched hand. Suddenly, the water exploded. Paul was ripped under the surface by the hippo, and when he felt the bristles of its snout with his hand, he realised it had swallowed him headfirst up to his waist. In an attempt to save himself, he took hold of the hippo's tusks, reefed himself out of its jaws and burst to the surface of the water, gasping for air. And as he opened his eyes, he saw Evans right in front of him. He screamed at him to get out of there and began swimming to safety himself. But as he looked back, Evans hadn't moved. The adrenaline pumping through his body had overwhelmed him. He was frozen. Without a second thought, Paul began to swim back to him. But as he went to grab Evan's hand, he felt a massive blow from below. He was once again waist deep in the hippo's jaws, but this time it bit down on him and thrashed him around. And when it suddenly spat him out, he started swimming away as fast as he could in an attempt to save himself. But the hippo charged him again, coming at him with its enormous mouth wide open. It hit him and chomped down on him again, its tusks piercing through his body over and over. It thrashed him around again, throwing him up in the air and catching him in its jaws, trying to rip him apart like a rag doll. It took him under the water once again and Paul thought it was over for him. But when it suddenly burst to the surface and spat him out, one of the other young guides, Mike, paddled in in a safety kayak and pulled Paul out of the water. Paul fought to stay alive as he lay in the bottom of the kayak, blood flowing out of his open wounds and the hippo continuing to bump against them, trying to attack them. When they finally made their way to the shore, Evans was nowhere to be found. He was gone. Mike tried to stop the bleeding as best as he could and Paul spent eight hours in excruciating pain while they searched for a hospital with a surgeon that could treat such severe injuries. And when they finally arrived, Paul underwent extensive surgery to repair 38 wounds all over his body where the beast's tusks had punctured his shoulders, neck, head, spinal column, face and had torn his Achilles tendon out. And although Paul had survived, his left arm had to be amputated since the skin had been completely torn off and it was so badly crushed. Paul was initially furious at the situation, but over time his attitude has changed and he has since become a motivational speaker, sharing his incredible story of survival across the globe. He believes he saw the hippo that nearly took his life that day once more when he returned to the Zambezi River, but he has never seen him since. A search party found Evan's body in the river two days after the attack. Although he was dead, he appeared unharmed, and it was concluded that he had sadly drowned during the ordeal. That's it for this countdown. Catch you later.